In this video, we're going to talk about the security regarding droplets and how we can connect them without having to use the root password you were emailed. Now, we could of course change the root password to something more secure. However, this could still be brute forced. The better option would be to use keys. Now, we'll be looking at each stage of setting this up so we can make access to our droplet much more secure. And the only downside to doing this is you can't apply key protection to already created servers. So you'll need to follow these steps and then create a new server, choosing the generated key that you want to be applied. It's probably for the best, don't worry, because it's better to have a server that protected than an unprotected one and wish you'd done all this in the first place. So I'm going to be using SSH keygen on OSX to generate public and private keys you can go ahead and use whatever software you want. For Windows, the best option is something like PuttyGen, which you can download from the Putty website. Now notice I'm not SSH'd into my server at the moment because I'm going to be creating a new one. I'm just on my local machine. So I'm going to go ahead and use SSH keygen with the T option to specify I want to generate an RSA key. So this will then prompt you to save your public and private keys. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Now, I'm also going to choose a passphrase, which is basically like an added layer of security, prompting for this password whenever I try and use these keys to connect. So let's go ahead and enter a passphrase. And this is completely optional, but I like to always do it. So we can see that we've got some cool information about our key here. Now, if we head over to the directory where these keys have been generated, so let's cd over to users. And do a directory listing there. We've got id rsa, which is our private key, and id rsa.pub, which is our public key. We can go ahead and open the public key and see what this looks like. Let's now go ahead and set up a new key on DigitalOcean and we can go ahead and paste this in. So let's go ahead and copy this and then go ahead and close this down. So over on DigitalOcean, let's go over to the SSH keys section. And basically what we're going to be doing is creating a new SSH key and pasting in what we just copied. Let's go ahead and add a new SSH key and enter a name. And we go ahead and paste the public key in here. Let's go ahead and cr click create SSH key. And it says that the SSH key was successfully added. So now I'm going to go ahead and create a new droplet. So let me just go ahead and refresh this page. I'm going to go ahead and enter a test name. And under the size, I'll choose the default size. I'll choose the default region and also the default operating system. But this time it says add optional SSH keys. So I'm going to go and choose Alex here. So we get the message down here that no root password will be emailed because we've selected SSH key for access. So once you've done this, don't expect a usual email from DigitalOcean with your username and password because we've chosen to access this using keys. So once our server's set up, we can go ahead and use our private key to actually connect with or to our server. And we'll be doing this with FileZilla 2 because, because we previously used F SFTP uh, to connect to our server using FileZilla. We'll also need to add the key there as well. So we'll be looking at doing a similar thing as well. So let's go ahead and open our SSH client again. I'm going to go ahead and SSH to root at the IP address of my server. So let's go ahead and copy this from this page and head back over to our terminal and paste this in. Now what's going to happen is um, because we have a, let's just type yes, because we have a key, um, basically this is automatically um, used my public key to authenticate, a uh, private key to authenticate with my public key on the server. So instead of entering a password that we'd usually find, what I'm entering now 
is the passphrase I added to my key earlier. So in an application like PuTTY for Windows, you'd have to visit the Auth tab of PuTTY, select the private key from your computer, and it would then use this. So let's go ahead and enter the passphrase I entered earlier when I generated my key and hit OK. And there we go, we're in as usual. So the last thing that we want to do is go ahead and uh, change our server so root login isn't possible. So we need to just go ahead and simply change a configuration here. So let's head over to etc ssh and we want to go ahead and edit a particular file and this file is sshd config so let's go ahead and use uh, nano with the sudo command to edit sshd config so let's go ahead and scroll down now where we see the permit root login option we're going to go ahead and change this to without password. Now, the last thing you want to do is change this to no, because then you won't be able to access using root. We just want to go ahead and add without password. Now, let's go ahead and save this using com uh, command and I or control and O. And let's go ahead and exit now. And the last thing we want to do is go ahead and uh, restart the SSHD process so the new configuration will take effect. So we need to find the process ID or PID with the following command. PS, AUXW, and then we use grep to find SSH. So we can see here we've got a few options, but the top one here is what we need. And the process ID is 791. So we're going to go ahead and say kill HUP and then choose the process ID. This will be different for you, probably. So let's say 791. So we're now more secure against brute force attacks. Now we'll look at connecting with SFTP within FileZilla, but providing our private key to FileZilla so we actually get access. Now again, inside of FileZilla, we don't actually have a password that we can enter here. So it's no good to go ahead and just enter the normal details. So let's set this up by entering our username and uh, our IP address. So let's head over to DigitalOcean, grab our IP, and go ahead and paste this in. Choose the username and choose the correct port as well. As I've already said, using a password here isn't going to work. So we need to go ahead and head over to the settings of FileZilla. So let's go ahead and head over to the preferences and click on SFTP. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and add the private key file by clicking add key file. And this will allow us to choose a location. In this case, I've saved this on my desktop as SSH RSA. I'm going to go ahead and hit open. Now we get prompted with this message, convert key file. And basically this means that because it has a passphrase, we need to convert it, unfortunately, to an unprotected private key. Now this isn't a massive deal because the passphrase is optional. So let's go ahead and just say yes. So I'll go ahead and enter my password, hit OK. And I need to go ahead and save this. So I'm gonna save it as SSH RSA unprotected. Hit save and we're done. So I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to go ahead and click Quick Connect now. Obviously, I don't need to supply a password. I'm going to click OK here, and that goes ahead and connects me as normal. So you can now manage all of your files as normal, connecting with your key. So that's it for protection of your droplet. As we've said, it's highly recommended that you do this, and you don't leave your server open to brute force attack on your password, or have your password root email to you, which is again potentially unsecure.